Y'all stop saying that shit. Shout out my high man, he's that fucking man. If he can't, I don't know, then nobody can. You get the only one putting on with this shit. Pulling up to your section. My Hot Minute, number one podcast in the universe. We live in Denver, Colorado with Big Grit, man. What's going on? Man, you know what the fuck going on, man. Just trying to make it happy, bro. In yeah. the way and out the way. Hell oh, yeah, man. Hey, this, uh, like you said, this interview's long overdue. Overdue. So, uh, <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> real, you real. tapping in, bro. Yeah, man. I appreciate you too, bro. Hell oh, yeah, okay. Uh, first off, I just want to shout the sponsor of today's video, 3AM Water. Make sure you go get that hydration for the go-getters. Yes, sir. You know, I got to drink that. Hell yeah, man. Straight out of Colorado with it. But, um, man, there's a, a lot of things I want to get into, but uh, this is our first interview, so yeah. let's just dive into your backstory a little Hell bit. Hell yeah. Um, where are you originally from? So, originally, I'm from Cleveland, but... Ohio? Yeah. I'm going to just talk about that less, though, because to be honest, I was, yeah. you know what I'm saying, what made me was Denver, Colorado type shit, so I'm really from, you feel me? I'm repping the city. I grew up like in a... Uh, Montbello, Green Valley type area. I done lived on, lived in Park Hill. I done lived on the E and shit, you feel me? I just recently moved to Aurora, like, probably like 20, 21. I lived out there a little bit for like, back and forth, you know what I'm saying, staying with homies and shit, but yeah. mostly Denver, you feel me? When did you move from uh, Cleveland to Denver? <sighs> Young, bro, before I could even remember, that's what I'm saying, like, I'm from there, but I don't even really Hella rep Cleveland like that, I love it, you feel me? I'm a Browns fan, Ohio State fan. You're a Browns fan, Browns fan over yeah. Broncos? No, I like the Broncos too. My uncle played for uh, the Broncos though, so oh, like really? I have a different type of relationship with the Broncos. He's an alumni, so I didn't went to hella games and. Who, who was he? Wade Manning. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Hell so yeah, yeah. but now I, I fuck with the Broncos, but I'm just saying like, I fuck with all Cleveland shit. But I feel like Denver made me. So most niggas be trying to like use that shit as clout. Like, oh, I'm from this place and that place. Right. Man, Denver made me who I am. You feel me? So. That's some real shit. Hell yeah. I can hear your voice too. Yeah. You sound like a Denver dude. Yeah, shit. I'm, bro, I'm, I've been out here for too long. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Okay, so you moved. Uh, you don't really remember. You were pretty young. And you said the first place you lived was like Mont Bell, Green Valley area. Yeah, Green Valley. And then you moved to the east side at one point in Park Hill. I moved to Park Hill uh, when I was like nine. Okay. And then we went to the east side for like a year and then back to the valleys, like when I was probably like 13 type shit. So how was that kind of growing up in a couple different neighborhoods out here environments? Because, you know, what I'm I saying? mean, honestly, for what I do now, I feel like that shit worked out because then I know everybody from all different type of sides. So right. you feel me? I, I feel like I get respect in a lot of different areas and shit in different That's places. Right. So you feel me? So I feel like it worked out good. It was kind of hard as a kid just moving around all the time and shit. But right. I feel like for what I'm doing now it worked out. You feel me? Oh, that's some real shit. What'd you learn, like, growing up as a kid in those areas? Because I, I know you said there were some struggles with it, but, like, what were some of those, like, things, if you could pinpoint them? I mean, I feel like I had the same upbringing to any kid really living in Denver, but you feel me? Like, I feel like our era started kind of coming into that gangster shit, so we just hopped off the porch hella early type of shit, you feel me? So yeah. I just seen a whole bunch of shit I probably shouldn't have, but it kind of accelerated my path to, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that got me in trouble type of shit. So I just seen all type of shit, bro. But it made me learn, like, uh, at the end of the day, like, you have a decision you can make uh, on your own. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be in shit. I just chose to be in that motherfucking shit. So right. that's when I realized, like, I just wanted to be out the porch. Like, and nobody really forced my hand. We live in Denver. There ain't, like, no back east or, like, you know what I'm saying? Chicago type of shit. Like, a lot of people out here choose that shit because that's what they want to do. In my opinion, would you you'd say that a lot more people in Denver choose the that lifestyle rather than actually having to, or I guess, be more forced into like a different city? Is that what yeah, you're I'm I'm not saying that there's not poverty stricken areas out here and shit yeah. like that. Because to me, that's what really be making shit shake. Like when you don't have nothing to lose, you are gonna do more. You feel me? But right. I feel like there's some niggas out here that went through some struggles type shit. So I'm not finna speak on everybody, but I feel like overall the culture of Denver, like. I can see it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's not that, it's just to me, like, I, if you went back to Cleveland and shit, I could really show you some real trap looking yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, in Colorado, even the rough areas don't look crazy. You feel yeah, me? Like, yeah. it's not no super poverty stricken ass shit compared to the other places. But I feel like the niggas out here that go hard go crazy, though. No different than any place I've been to. You feel me? Because I live in hella different states and different niggas get down. You feel me? So. No, that's real because even if you look at it from like a real estate perspective, there's houses in Cleveland going for like. Less ten thousand dollars, like, yeah, yeah like, like out here, real bando type shit. Out here, you houses know? you're lucky you ain't gonna get that. under like two, three hundred thousand. Yeah, me, so it's a different. That's what I'm saying. It's just different, but yeah. 
Regardless though, like I said, I ain't finna shit on the town like niggas out here is pussy mm -hmm. and shit. I just feel like a lot of niggas just crazy because they be, they choose that shit. I feel yeah, like man. you know what I'm saying, or more or less. And I mean, even like you could say, even like yeah, poverty does make it worse. I feel like, but you could even say sometimes with a city like Denver with more money, like like you said, some people are gonna be able to have money to kind of like yeah, do the shit. The shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, the thing is, too, it's about a culture thing now. Like, if you think about it, any city you go to, anywhere you go to now, everybody think they on that. Because right. that's just, I feel like the culture of music changed. Music yeah, it just changed how people, everybody wants to be that person that they hear in the songs. You feel me? So, right. some people have no idea why they doing it, but they, shit, I done been to jail and all type of shit and seen niggas that shouldn't have been there. But they be influenced by the culture, so. No, that's some real shit. Okay, so, um, let's get into your life a little more when would you say you first started like getting into music rap music and stuff like that i mean i always been into music my whole life but i feel like rap more i started taking that shit more serious like when i went to uh, lamar community college i dropped out i was playing basketball for a couple years and then i went to my homies college? yeah were you I, playing in high school too yeah i played in high school yeah where at i went to Smokey, cherry creek and then I graduated. I was getting in hella trouble. I ended up graduating at this school called Sienega in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, okay. And that's where I kind of really started catching on for basketball and shit and started getting like looks and all that type of shit. But I didn't, I just decided to come back to Colorado and just walk on at, at uh, Trinidad State. Now I transferred from there and went to Lamar. So When you say you're getting looks, like big college looks? Yeah. Or what? I had like probably five or six D1 offers, but my mind wasn't, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't in the right mind state at the time. I just wanted to get back home and dug it out. You feel me? So I wanted to be somewhere close back to home. So I didn't even take no scholarships. And two, I was a football player. And I probably had more offers in football than I did basketball. But I didn't really want to go to school. I just wanted to get back home and start, you know what I'm saying? Fuck around, so. Yeah. What? Man, I mean, I just got to be honest. Like, it was a dream for me to, like, go and play in the NBA or whatever. And, like, I played a little high school, but I wasn't good enough to really, like, mm -hmm. get a D1 scholarship or anything like that. So what was it like, you know what I'm saying, kind of turning that down? Because, you know, that's a lot of things. Like, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, are good enough, <laughs> good enough to get those offers. Yeah, that's what a lot of people tell me. Like, and like I said, my uncle that played for the Broncos and shit, he got me hella football looks and all type of shit, taking me to these camps and shit like that. So I feel like a lot of people was disappointed, but it just wasn't what I was interested in. Like, you it was cool. You passion for it? Nah, like... I didn't even realize how much I didn't even really give a fuck about it until I first picked up a mic. Like, I was at the school, I was arguing with my coach for one day, you feel me? And I went to this dude's house that, and like, Lamar is like a small ass little city, like, yeah. almost to Kansas and shit. But there was this nigga at my school that had like a mic and shit, so I just ended up going to his house one day. And the song I made was Sorry as Fuck, but like, just the process of doing it, I'm like, man, this is what the fuck I wanna do. Like, I don't even wanna, I don't even trying to run no fucking, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to run no more, I ain't trying to have nobody tell me what the fuck to do. Like. I just kind of just phased out of that shit. Like I knew I could hoop and yeah, I knew man. I could play sports, but I just for some reason I knew that you have to have a passion for something to really be committed to it. And I just wasn't really that committed to it. You feel yeah, me? That's real. It was just skill. So I feel like just even with business and entrepreneurship in general, like you gotta have a, a you gotta want to do it or you won't. <laughs> Period. Okay, so you said you started rapping like freshman year of college. You said with Mar nah, sophomore year. Like I'll say nineteen, I started kind of like. Baby rapping, like was I never just like recording on the laptop. Yeah, type yeah, just recording and some like you know what I'm saying a little makeshift, little mobile studios type of shit. Like I never really think I hit a big studio to probably like 2021 20, when I was going. There's a studio called KMG it used to be off like oh, a Rapper Hall yeah. Road. You heard of that? Yeah. Well, I've been to the one in Boulder, but I guess yeah, it, it used to be here. yeah, it used to be back. It used to be down here on Rapper. I heard about that. Like in I-25 type of shit. That was my first big studio I started going to. So, yeah. Okay. So were you? Like, how was it back then? Like, were you, like, were you um, picking, how were you getting beats back then? Because that was, like, probably just around when YouTube started. Yeah, I was, like I that. was getting all my beats from YouTube. I used to have this uh, producer named Ann Threes that used to send us beats, but my brother Dion like, was the reason why that shit came about, you feel me? Like, I feel like they knew each other, like, they, they both went to Overland and shit, so he was yeah. giving us beats, but... Most of that shit was just YouTube. I even still be fucking with the YouTube here and there. You feel me? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I mean, they got clean beats and shit. You can't deny it. But yeah. it's, it's, um, it's, it's a little to monetize them sometimes. Yeah. Depending and I think it's, it, but... no, it is hard to monetize, and I agree with that. But at the end of the day, and so I can get to like some sound producers. Like, I have producers in the city. You feel me? Right. Like, DZ, uh, Dead 808. Dawson goes over. 
know what I'm saying? There's a, I'm not even trying to fucking forget nobody because there's like a lot of people I yeah. be fucking with. Waves, uh, no media. Like, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with a lot of little producers out here and shit, but at the end of the day, when I'm coming to the studio and it's like crunch time, like, I don't really sit at home and write shit and figure shit out. I just come and put a beat on and start rapping. So, sometimes it be YouTube because just for the sake of time. You feel me? Hell yeah, no. That makes sense. All right, so you start rapping um, in college. Did you, and you say you stopped going to college that year too? Yeah, I, as soon as I started doing that rap shit, I just dropped out because, like, for a whole week straight, I didn't go to practice or nothing. We were supposed to have a game that week. I didn't go to the game. I didn't go to practice. And then the coach is like, nigga, do you still want to play? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm good. So I just ended up staying for like one more week, and then I went back home. And that was, you said, in Arizona? No, nah, that was uh, in Lamar. Okay, that's, like, that's a little down south, right? No, nah, that's like, it's kind of south. Trinidad is like right by New Mexico. Okay. Lamar is like more close to like Kansas type okay, shit. Okay. Like an hour, less than an hour from Kansas type shit. You feel me? Oh, okay, that makes sense. You uh, you were about 21 at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 20, I think, 20. You come back to um, Denver? Yep. And then how does the music career kind of go from there? Like, uh, you start taking it serious or is it more still kind of like a hobby? At I'm still level? fuck around. It's kind of a hobby because the dude that was in Lamar with me that had the little setup, he came back too, like oh, probably a couple months going? later. And then me and my brother used to record with him all the time, like, in my garage. Like, bro, I just used to think the shit was just fun. You feel me? Like, I didn't really have no super skill and that shit shit. But it was just intriguing to me. Like, I just liked, you know what I'm saying, hearing beats and just right. fucking around on that shit. So, like, I don't think I ever really took it serious for, like, years. Like, probably until, like, the last maybe year or two. You feel me? Because in between all that shit, I was going back and forth to jail, all that type of shit. Like, so I never really got to lock in. 2013, uh, DOT dropped our first tape. Oh. And then I didn't drop shit until last year type shit. You know what I'm saying? From 2013. But in the, in the meantime so between that, yeah, like I just didn't really, and then for, probably for like three or four years, I just didn't make music. You know what I'm saying? I was just yeah. back and forth from jail and shit. So I was really just trying to stay afloat. I just had my shit head first in the streets. So once I kind of like leveled out from that shit, then I started looking at it like, man, I might be able to do something with this shit if I take it serious. Right. And I didn't know if it was going to work or not, but you feel me? I started making moves and the shit started, doors started opening, so I started taking it more serious, like, you know what I'm saying? Because music's expensive. Right. So when I started putting money behind it and it was working, I'm like, fuck it, let's just go all in with it. Because before then, I was just like, that's what kind of kept me on the shelf because I already knew, like, if you ain't really willing, willing to invest in this shit, like, you ain't finna get nothing out of it. You feel right, me? Right, No, that makes sense. Um, so you... Back in like 2013, 2012, what was the Denver rap scene like at that Bro, time? It was com completely different than now. That's what made me kind of want to get back into it now too. Like we didn't have no mile high minutes. We didn't have shit. Like even some of the studios were like more popping up at that point. Like there yeah. wasn't like a, a ton of places you can go if you was trying to take the shit serious. The producing was different. Even some of the artists like... I respect how the scene was back then. But like now we have some of those rappers that was back then that was the only ones around. Like only thing... Only thing people knew was box boys, you feel me? So like Trev, Trev L Keys, G Six, Priest, Colorado Miracle, Lil Bad, like those are people I grew up listening to. Interstate Ike, you feel me? Like mm -hmm. nothing, you know what I'm saying? Them motherfuckers are still going crazy. But now there's just such a big ass scene. Like you can go to any different type of blog page or even yours. Like there's motherfuckers everywhere rapping now. Right. Cause I feel like the scene's growing, so everybody wants a little piece of that shit. So but back then when I started doing that shit, it wasn't even that. That's why I didn't take it serious. Like, there was nothing to really do. Like, I was doing shows and stuff, but there was nobody there. And I just didn't really like the scene at that point. Like, now I feel like the shit done grown to, like, where it's, it makes sense to do the shit out here. You feel me? Yeah. That's why I feel like a lot more people are doing it. No, that's dope. I appreciate um, the recognition, man. Cause, like, shit, that shit helps, bro. If there ain't nobody blogging and putting the shit out there, like, we ain't going to yeah. get no shine. That's why a lot of other states are starting to grow bigger and faster because... You got people with big ass YouTube platforms or big ass Instagrams that's putting on the artists or at least talking about right. it. So there's conversation and chatter about music in the city. Like yeah, yeah. before shit like that started coming in, like you just it's really all on you because there's other people that was already been doing big shit. Like right. I remember G Six had a uh, you know Six right yeah, Hunter yeah, X Six. Yeah. He been had like songs with E Forty like yeah, years yeah. ago and like you know what I'm saying there's some other people. That was doing that shit too. Ike Ben had a motherfucking presence in the Bay, but right. there was nothing to put light on that shit. You feel me? So right. nobody really knew about it except for the people in the know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. 
And now you see like even blogs out of state tapping are tapping in, yeah. Springer, yeah, I see he be Thizzler. tapping with you a lot. Yep, the Thizzler be fucking with um, hella people from the town. Yeah, Honey yeah. Pack, Polo, Dallas Global, even a little bit. Be yeah, like, I seen that. Nolazine, like it's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like it's dope to see. Ain't like, that other one? The last one you said that's a New Orleans one, right? Yeah, Nolazine. Yeah, I just seen that shit the other day. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. So it's, it's dope, man. And, um, I think although we all kind of work together, and the scene still has a lot of work to do, like. Um, I would say, I, and I've only really been paying attention for the past three, four years. Like, I remember faintly when I was little, but mm -hmm. I was in, like, high school and shit. It was different. Seeing the Heart in the Hills video. Yeah, she, that, that was, shit like, was hard, though. That was yeah. one of the biggest things for the city, though. Yeah. Niggas shot at AP and Wax. Like, nigga, right. them niggas went crazy on that motherfucker. Yeah, and then Trevor Rich, like, I remember them, but then, like, when I actually started paying attention to the scene, from then, like, three past three years, it's went crazy. Like, yeah, like, like I was saying, like, you know what, I'm not even years. lying. A hell of people started popping up through the ranks. Like, oh, man. man, I love it, man. I love the competition. And then, too, with more people, it gives people more of an opinion. You feel me? Yeah. So, people I love everybody in the scene shit. that's doing doing their thing and shit, man. It's, it's love because it, competition breeds, like, beast. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? The more competition there is, it holds people accountable to make better music, to right. drop yeah, better right. visuals. That's why I feel like a lot of these videographers are starting to pop up too, because there's people, I think if, a couple years ago, even if there was 19 videographers, you wouldn't even be able to make a list. <laughs> no, because no, there no, would, yeah. it'd be like five of them actually getting videos, and then right. the other ones would have three for the whole year type of shit, because there's yeah. not enough artists to get to. But that, that kind of just showing you, like, you feel me? We got clothes brands that's coming up, we got videographers, producers. Like, the scene is yeah. starting to bud, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we keep at this same trajectory. We're going. You're gonna make some shit happen. No, for sure. I, I like the, the positive energy and like the manifestation you got, you feel me? Like just how you talk about the scene and shit. Cause like, I, I feel like a lot of people, I do have confidence mm -hmm. and you definitely do, but a lot of people kind of like, eh, you know what I'm saying? They're like, eh, I believe in it, but I don't know. I might have to balance you for me type shit. No, nah, and to be honest though too, like even if you make moves out of state, we still we you need. still repping the city. Like right. people in other markets do that same shit too. Like how many people do you know? Like Chief Keith and them went to L.A. Right. Like you you should do what you need to do to grow your brand. But regardless where the fuck I go, like I said when I start the interview, I'm repping Denver. Right. You know what I'm saying? When somebody asks me where the fuck I'm at, I'm I'm out here from Denver, so I could you feel me? Bring that shit back to the city because we deserve the light too. There's hella talented niggas out here, right. and I feel like when some one person breaks through. Everybody's gonna yeah, notice the scene because we already like a sleeping giant. There's hella talented niggas out here. I can name a million. That's what right. I'm saying. Like, and regardless if we fuck with each other or don't, I don't disrespect nobody's music because that shit's helping the scene grow. You feel me? Right, like, right. It ain't really no, it ain't nothing personal to me like that to be tripping on people about their music. If motherfuckers like it, then I love it. You feel me? At the end of the day. No, that's some real shit. Okay. Um, so I know you brought up that you knew like Polo and Savvy. And yeah, well, I'm from Most Hated, so you yeah. know what I'm saying? They just from the gang type shit. Hell yeah. How did um, y'all kind of all meet each other growing up? Like, shit, bro, to be like, honest, I met. The same area? Or? Nah, like, so for Polo, when I first was making my first original run before bro went to prison type of shit, we already been tapped in. If you, uh, my second mixtape I ever dropped, Crunch Time. He was on there. Oh, okay. We had this song called Coke. He was like Lord, Lord Polo. Yeah, bro, to be honest, I'm not even... That motherfucker, I love his new sound, <laughs> but when he was rapping like that, like, he, to me, he was the best artist in the city, period. Like, See, I like the new shit better. I, don't know. I love... I lo no, like, I just loved the way he sounded because it was like a mix of Wayne and Polo. Like, I love the new shit. I'm not knocking it. But at that point, like, you feel me? Like, like I said, the scene was still kind of growing. Yeah. I feel like he had a stranglehold on that bitch. Like, he would just, everything he said was iconic. It was memorable and shit. So I just, you know what I'm saying? I was like an up and coming artist. So I'm like, man, I'm gonna try to tap in with bro. You know what I'm saying? See what the fuck I can do with him. And that nigga just showed me hella love. You feel me? Put me on some songs. And, and then bro went to prison. You feel me? I didn't probably meet Honey Pack till recent. On my last album, we did Triple Beam. We got another song that's finna drop soon too. But I really met him from a. Uh, well, I knew of him through my little brother Javon and uh, my my uh, older brother Trey. Like that's their little cousin and shit. So right. niggas been known about him. And once that nigga started dropping music, that nigga shit was just crazy. So I'm like, I need to reach out. You know what I'm saying? The gang and you know what I'm saying? Try to put some shit together. But I never really, I knew Polo. I never really knew Hundred Pack like that. So I'm not gonna even lie. Like it's something that kind of developed in like later years. You feel me? Through other mutual connections. You feel me? No, that makes sense. No, I, f I fuck with Polo's old sound, but like you said, I feel like it, it sounds a little more like Wayne, a little bit, you feel me? No, it, d it did, but at the time, it was just Wayne so, was it was just, there was nobody even, most people's sound in Colorado was just, to me, honestly, at that point, was not good. Right. Like, it was, it had a sound, but it was like, 
the sound just didn't sound good. Yeah. So he was like a breath of fresh air to listen to at that point because he was just gassing. Like even if it was kind of Wayne sounded, he was fucking going crazy. <laughs> like his bars was top notch. You feel me? So I just gravitated towards that shit. Like and until he's a real nigga, like he's a real street nigga, and I was just you know what I'm saying. I was off the porch type shit and. Me and bro was, you know what I'm saying, moving around doing different type of shit. So yeah. I just feel like it kind of just linked in like that. You know what I'm saying? No, it's real. So um, I know you brought up like jail a couple times. I don't really want to get into like what happened, but like what did you learn from going to jail? I suppose. What are like positives you kind of took out of it that you could kind of. Man, it just slowed me down. It just, I guess it just slowed me down because the shit I was doing to get me in there could have got me killed too. So. I feel like without going to jail, I'd have shit. I either would have been in prison for forever or mm -hmm. shit. R, you know what I'm saying? RIP type nigga on the shirt. So I feel like the best thing I learned was just like to to chill out and realize that there's more than just like trying to prove. Because honestly, I don't care. Any nigga in the street say like some of the shit you do, you prove it to like get a status. You feel me? Right, right. And it's proven for other people that don't give a fuck. Because when you're in jail, you ain't getting shit. When you're right. dead, motherfuckers will forget you. So when I learned that motherfucking process, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I could still be this nigga that I am because that's really me. But start learning how to get to the bag more and right. take music more serious. Like, shit that's going to, like, elevate my craft and shit. Niggas already know what I'm about. Or if they don't, then you, you take care of that when it's time. You feel me? Right. So I just learned kind of just to, like, separate in my mental. And I don't know if that even makes sense. But, like, I started realizing that I actually had something I could live for versus just trying to like keep crashing out to try to prove something, you feel me? No, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That was a good explanation. Um, Big Grit, were you, was that always your rap name? Nah, like when I, f when we first started uh, doing music in 2013, I used to be, cause I'm from Most Haters, so I used to just go my my hood name, I used to just be b Sad. Started, okay. Like giving me, like I got to grit from other people, like hella niggas started calling me Baby Sav the Gritter. Yeah. And then it went from that to Gritter Man. And then I just was like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to run with the grit shit. And I just put a big in front of that shit and just went with the grit. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it sound better than Gritter Man. Because that's like almost like saying I'm Gucci or something. Like, Gucci yeah, Man yeah, or something. Like, I just already knew somebody had that type of shit. So I just changed that shit up a little bit. That's hard. Not. My bad. The reason I laugh is because my homies be calling me Be the Sav sometimes. <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's Baby Sav from Most Hated Gangsters. You feel me? So. Okay. Yeah, I just went with that for a long ass time because I didn't know no name. Like, yeah, you know, when you yeah. start rapping, you don't really know, like, what you finna be. I'm like, yeah. niggas already called me this. You know what I'm saying? And then when people started, like, changing, like, I feel like I started growing up more, people started associating me more as the gritter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I was I was grinding, getting shit, right. getting shit done. So I just kind of, that shit just kind of grew on me because I started hearing less B sounds and more grit. You feel me? So I was just like, let me just push that number. When did you officially change it? When you started rapping again a couple years? Yeah, ago? when I started re-rapping again, then everything went to Big Grit. You feel me? So, okay. probably like 2016, 17. I wasn't dropping nothing at that point, but that's when I kind of started getting my feet back with and recording songs and shit again. You feel me? So, no, that makes sense. so when you started again, what was like the scene kind of like at that point? You said 2016, 2018 is? I'll say like, let's just say 2017, I started recording again. And at that point, I feel like that's what made me want to get back into it because the scene was 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 kind of growing. Like it's yeah. not where like how it is now, where there's like all these bloggers and all that type of stuff. Right, but right. the artists I was listening to and the music they was making, I was like, damn, like I really feel like we got a potential to like really do something with this shit. Yeah, that was really just like my opinion on the scene. Like, damn, like there's so many talented niggas. Like to me, I was always excited about that type of shit because I'm not right. I'm not afraid to compete. Right, and it doesn't really hurt you. you know what I'm saying like. To have other people are good because it brings more attention to the to, to the scene. I feel like whole, yeah, the yeah. more the talent grew, the more the hometown kids didn't have to listen to a nigga from Chicago or a nigga right. from here. They started being clicked up about Colorado artists. But I feel like when that started happening, that's when we started getting taken more serious. Like when you actually have people from the town, like oh, uh, like even if they don't like you, but they just have an opinion on music. Like fuck grit. But I like so and so. Or fuck this nigga. I like this nigga. Like right. they're paying attention and they're making opinions on some shit. In years past, they didn't even give a fuck. If you was a local yeah. Colorado rapper, that was like a, a bad thing to say. You didn't want to right. tell nobody you're a rapper out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In 2013 type shit, you feel me? Oh, damn, that's some real shit, man. Um, that might be the title of the interview right there. For real, though. <laughs> it was. It was just you didn't get no love from doing that shit because yeah. everybody thought it was a joke because nobody was making moves. Now we got people right. with fucking placements. We got the Trevs of the world and the, the Doobie Newtons, you feel me? All that type of shit. Like, people are getting... Writing credits, people are really like making moves to the point where like right. 
people making money out here. Yeah, and so they're going out and doing that shit, and niggas be like, where you from? They be like, we from Denver. They be like, damn, I didn't know there was talent like that out here. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people are coming to coming to tap in like that's what that's what this nigga saw said yeah. he's like i didn't even know Nick denver was like that until he got here you feel and me? they realized it's a big ass city it's not no little shit, shit yeah and it's nice out here though you like, feel me like yeah. it's a it's a good city to come visit you feel me yeah. i feel like personally you so. get a good mix of the mountains and the city you feel me yeah like, and then once you realize the culture out here like you said sauce and them did like I, I, I feel like they fell in love. They stayed here yeah, way yeah. longer than they were supposed to be here. They were supposed <laughs> yeah, to be yeah. in and out. And they were like, damn, this ain't no little cow town type shit. Because right. like I said, most of my family's from Ohio or like really my where I came from was Ohio, but most of my family's from Pennsylvania and New York type shit. Oh, okay. So when I tell them anything about like some gang banging shit, some music, they be like, nigga, you live <laughs> in the mountains with all white people and cows. Yeah. It's like they don't understand it. It's like this is a city city. You feel me? Right, they think right. it's like a cow town. Yeah. Unless you come here, you won't really know. You know what I'm saying? No, that's some real shit. But I feel like we finna wake everybody up for what the fuck it really is going on out here, though. So yeah, and that has been happening for sure. Definitely, I feel like over the past, a lot of people been traveling here. We get more shows. Migos was here for Halloween. Like they could have went anywhere for that day. You feel me? Right. A lot of people want to come to Colorado. I feel like. No, hell yeah. Okay, so you um, the first song that really caught my eye with you was uh, the first one you did with Mo. The High Tonight. Yeah, I feel like it would because I already knew that. You and Mo's relationship, and it was on like he was already on your radar. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. So I knew when that song dropped, I was like, "This is gonna be the first time this nigga at least know who the fuck I am for you real." You already for real. thinking that? Yeah, that's crazy. Like when I made the song, because like I'm I'm really kind of like, how do I even how do I put this shit? I don't just be doing shit to do it. Like I be really tactical Thank about how I fucking make moves and what I'm trying to do. Like that's what I'm saying. Even when I made that song with Mo, I never realized months later we would be like damn their best friends type of shit like i didn't yeah. do it for that intention right. but i didn't have no problem paying bro like when i when i and i, I definitely did you feel him, me yeah. i just respected him and i knew he had the platform like shit that's gonna be my first 100k video that shit said like ninety seven thousand. yeah yeah you know what right I'm saying? now it's at 97 yeah, yeah i bet you're gonna be excited about that. bro i'm yeah. excited as hell like that's what the fuck we yeah. work for bro you know what i'm saying to get the recognition and shit in yeah. i appreciate mo for putting me on that motherfucker and you know what i'm saying help grow my career and shit and then Really, like after the first couple songs we started doing, like me and this nigga really just tapped in on some different shit. You know what I'm saying? We're like, now we're about to have a tape dropping on Thanksgiving. We probably got, me and him alone probably got 30 songs with all FPP. I probably got 50. Like, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But we really made like a little strong brotherhood type of shit. I fuck with them heavy as fuck. And I really feel like I'm damn near sitting in this chair because of Mo. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always going to give that nigga love because it just, it brought me to the scene. You feel me? Like a lot of people didn't know me. When that song dropped, DMs went crazy. Like everybody was, oh bro, let's do this, let's do that. Like started getting interviews, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely, you know what I'm saying. If you want to get your, get your brand up, man, hit tapping with Mo and them for sure. <laughs> That's some real shit, man. For real, the bro, they got and they got so, real life fan base. Like they don't have, they ain't faking shit. They don't like like, they don't pay for views. They don't do right. nothing. They just drop their shit, bro, and people just gravitate towards their shit. Like I've never seen nothing. Quite like that. You feel in me? Denver, especially. But it, I think it's just something about their sound. Mo and all of them, they sound really good. They yeah. know how to sound and melodize and like do all that shit. Mix it up, do the hard rap shit, but also really. Like yeah, they be doing some more Mo 3 type shit to me. Like yeah, singy, yeah. but it's, it's it touch your soul because it's real. So yeah, street yeah. niggas gonna relate to it. The ladies can listen to it. They it's good. It's easy too. on the ears. Yeah. Oh man, they, bro, trust me. Bro. We gonna wake some people up when we drop this motherfucking few but hated tape, bro. I'm telling you, we got some shit on there. Where people gonna be like, damn, I didn't even know niggas was coming like that. Trust me. That's hard. That motherfucker about to be. Oh, few but oh, that's hard. Few but hated. hated, yeah. Are you gonna like collab with a couple people on there or what? Yeah, it's it's uh right now the list is most of the songs is me and Mo, but because it's few but you know what I'm saying few with plenty plus the hated mix, it's gonna be Wes on there, Shada. JJ, Polo, Polo. Tay, D. I'm gonna try to see if this nigga Polo wanna get yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah, but honestly, hard. I feel like that'll be hard as fuck, like to <laughs> com yeah. uh, combine that shit because even that song that uh that Honey Pack did with him, that shit went crazy oh, too. Yeah. Like you feel me? Nah, yeah, that shit's gonna be clean. When do you think that's gonna drop? Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. That shit's already basically already done. We're just waiting for the uh, song from West. That's it. And we're gonna see if we can get Mate on there. But if not, we're just gonna drop it as is. We already got like fucking 22 tracks for that shit. We just going once we get the uh, the West shit done and potentially Monte, then we're gonna go go through and decide which one we gonna drop. But we are gonna drop a gang of singles and shit too, though. Mm. Now I got a lot of love for them, man. They make a lot of good music, um, and like you said, it's authentic. You know, they got real fans, real story to tell. 
Um, and it's not it, – obviously, they got a huge Colorado fan base, but they got – Shit, they got people Cali, everywhere. Arizona, Texas, like I, – I told you, I graduated in, in Tucson, Arizona. One yeah. of my homies sent me some shit. He was like, bro, like I seen you on this song with them. I've been listening to them for two – like a year or something. Like some yeah. niggas I used to go to high school with was already knew who these niggas was. So, like, when I fucking dropped high tonight – even people from Arizona was hitting me, so you can see how far they, you know what I'm saying, they reach is. Like, oh, yeah. they really got fans. Because they, they make good music, though. You feel right, me? Right. No, so, yeah, it's all love for them. Yeah. Um, and then the, the one that I really fucked with that you recently dropped with, uh, Sauce Wood Winning. Psh, that song is a slap. Yeah, yeah. This I, nigga Wood Win is that nigga, boy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Much respect to TSF overall, but I feel like I gravitated towards Wood Winning the most. You feel me? Yeah. I feel like Sauce is. A great leader, but he has to be focused and he has to put his energy in different places, you feel me, sometimes. Right, right. And Will Win was just a wild ass nigga like me. So like we would just fuck around the whole time, smoke a weed, talk a shit, and the energy was smooth. Like when we first yeah. put that first verse down, niggas was down there tackling me and shit type of shit. Like they was fucking with it. So I was like, that shit yeah. made me more comfortable to tap in because you gotta think like Regardless of motherfuckers act like they too big or not, like I was low key nervous. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I had to walk in there and perform on some shit. I didn't know what was going on. Right. And I didn't even get an invite. You feel me? Like, you I pushed up on that shit. Wait for the opportunity. Yeah, I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I'm not going to keep going back and forth with a lady on. Shout out Miss Megan. You feel <laughs> yeah, me? yeah. Like, I'm not finna go back and forth because I don't have that money to spend. Motherfuckers be trying to act like they rich as fuck. Like, bro, I'm, I can't spend no 10 bands on one right. feature. Like, right. that shit don't really make sense. But. When I got in front of them, you feel me? I feel like they understood. Like, this nigga's trying to work. He got some money to bring. I'm not asking for no free shit or right, right. some low ball. Let me get something for 500 type of shit. So, right. I feel like they fucked me off that shit. And then when I made the song, boom. Walk was like, man, we can fuck around and do another one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because at first, I was just going to do the song with Wood winning. We ended up doing three songs. You feel me? So, definitely shout out TSF. I feel like they definitely... When I did that shit, too, I started getting bigger shit. Gutted TV followed me. He was, like, oh, okay. trying to hit me for some promo and shit. So, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? No, TSF man, when they tapped into Denver, that shit was dope. Like they, they did it the right way. To a lot of they people. did it the right way, man. They was wearing niggas' clothing brands, yeah. all type of shit. Like and you, like you said, they did it the right way. You don't see a lot of artists doing that when they come tap. They're real street niggas, bro. They'll come pull up where the fuck you at. They ain't scared. They gon' you know what I'm saying they ain't Hollywood or nothing. Like right. I respect the motherfuckers a lot because I didn't know what to expect right. dealing with some bigger artists. You feel me? It was cool as hell. Yeah, and like you said, they loved it so much they stayed longer. They stayed they, hell longer because like must be here what like a week and a half. Shit, two weeks. Bro, this is how crazy this shit is. Like, like I made the the song with Walk. And the yeah. second Wood Winning song and the other Wood Winning song, you ain't even heard it yet. It's with me, Wood Winning, and Mo. Yeah. We made that shit this one night. Yeah. And then the next, like two days one. later, I went I went to jail and then popped out like three days later when I bonded and shit. And they were still here. Like, I thought they was finna be gone. You feel me? Yeah. So we was able to get some more like shooting and shit in. You feel me? So, yeah, they was here for a minute, bro. They was probably here for like 10 days, I feel like. Nah, I mean, they kept hitting me up every night. Like, Pop out, let's get some footage. I'm like, shit, if you're still here, I'm gonna keep working with you. And y'all fucking with me, so like, I'm gonna keep working with you. No, nah, they, you know they, they, they was fucking with you for sure, for sure. Like, oh, that's yeah. what kind of like, we was talking about you like at least two or three times. Like, what yeah, you yeah. think about, bro? I'm like, man, I fuck with him. He's good for the city. Like, even though, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we already <laughs> talked about our little yeah, past yeah. shit, but I don't throw no, I ain't gonna throw no salt on nobody. But like, oh, fuck right. that nigga, don't fuck with him. Cause that makes you look goofy too. Like, right. when you have a big ass platform, that just make you look like a hater. Like, right. no, he don't do shit. Like, don't yeah. fuck with that nigga. You feel me? No, I appreciate that, man. They, sh they um... Well, should I seen they you sure tonight when I first did the first song. Yeah, was that, in that, that was the first night I think we actually met. Met in person, yeah, yeah it was, man. for sure. Yeah, we Because we, we, we exchanged numbers. We exchanged, my, yeah, yeah, we exchanged numbers. We chopped yeah. it, you feel me? And then I feel like from that point when we started kind of like understanding it wasn't no fucking problem, you feel me? Yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. just like some little shit that we had to get past, you feel me? Right. Well, shit, since, since we're talking about it, um... I seen the the interview on Street Nerds. Mm -hmm. This is the one I had a little. I was like, it wasn't nothing like, like oh he's definitely like talking down on me. I didn't take it as a jab, but it was more like, like, and it wasn't even necessary just you like you. No, know but you know I'm a, I'm getting an interview, so bro yeah. put it on spot. But you even yeah, saying yeah. I'm like so what you want to talk about the elephant in the room? Cause yeah, a lot of people already knew what was going on, but I feel like even in the interview I didn't even. You, you can right, go back right. and run the clip. Like I didn't never yeah, say nothing disrespectful. Say nothing. Nah, nah. I was just like, period, point blank. If I'm gonna be on song or something, yeah. I just want my credit. It don't give somebody else the credit for some shit I'm yeah. doing. Period. Because it was really over the E band shit. And no, I, I, I don't have no problem with E bands in them. But yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. nigga, damn. Like I was working hard for this shit. Like I'm just yeah. trying to get my little love. And that's really all it comes down to. You feel me? I had to learn that like this is a business, and there's like certain shit you should say and shouldn't say. So right. I feel like I still kept it professional. Like. 
I've never. No, yeah. I never feel like I just whipped you. Yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck my high minute. I ain't fucking with these niggas. Like, <laughs> no, you feel me? Like, I feel like yeah. I still kept it cordial. You feel me? No, I just said what I, what was asking me in the question. You yeah. feel me? So, well, when I watched that interview, um, like I said, it wasn't nothing personal against me. It was just like, uh, bro asked about the bloggers in the city, and mm -hmm. we were like showing love to Rhino, which was cool because I mm -hmm. fuck with Rhino too. I, I've met with him a couple times. Yeah, he told cool me. I talked to him a lot. Yeah. He told me like the child hella close and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fuck with him. Yeah, but it was like, and like I said, it's not even just you. In that interview, the way it went, I kind of felt like I was shading you or something. Oh, it, but it wasn't just you. It was like, to be honest, it was you and Streamers. Mm -hmm. where I felt like I was like, damn, like, you know, because I charge and shit for promo, which. You should. I get shit. It. Yeah. Well, shit, you got you deserve it because of the fucking platform you have. Yeah. Like, if you're doing everything for free, there's not gonna be no my minute. Right, right. Period. Like, nah, this shit all costs money. So. But it was like, I felt like I was getting kind of compared to Rhino and kind of like, and he deserves his love. Don't get it wrong. But like, there is a difference, you know. No shit <laughs> to any other blogs in the city. Like, I feel like people didn't see the other side. Like, the first year I did my high minute. I didn't make a penny. We were in debt, like, 10K. Like, I was sleeping in my whip, you feel me, not making shit. Like, yeah, people don't never, and, people don't always get to see that, yeah, that side yeah. and see, hear your story. We were just talking about that before the interview yeah. started. And I had to start understanding that type of shit, too. I feel like the main reason why I feel like I shot it out Rhino so much is because... Because yeah. he was showing you love, though. Yeah, that so was I the did. first person. Yeah. That, that was the first time I ever really started getting blog love. Like, yeah. That motherfucker did an interview with me when it was COVID. We did a little phone yeah. interview. But... I just feel like the reason why I kind of fuck with what he does is because mm -hmm. y'all are two different platforms. So is Street right. Nerds. All y'all have a different approach to what y'all are doing. Right. I just feel like he just gets mass amount of shit out. Like, you know what I'm no, saying? Yeah, I don't know how the fuck he does that shit or like where he even finds all these yeah. songs from. Yeah. But it's two different type of things. You feel me? And right, he's right. on this come up. I guarantee you in, in some in the next couple of years, he's going to have to charge. Yeah, yeah. Because he's going to get burnt out doing it. You right. feel me? I was just showing him love. Because he was like, well, what you think about what, 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 like, because right. I never once said like, fuck my high minute or yeah. I ain't fucking with Brenton or none of that type of shit. No, yeah, I was no, just, you, you know what I'm saying? I tried to keep it as professional as I could, yeah. and I didn't want to say too much about. You see, it was yeah. kind of a quick segment. Like I got in and out that question. You yeah. feel me? Because well, I wasn't trying to. I knew eventually I was gonna come sit down and do this with you, so yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah. You feel me? I ain't just gonna try to throw you under the bus type right. shit. Well, and not only that, and that's why I bring up street nerds. I'm gonna just be real on camera mm -hmm. too because I felt like, you know. As an interviewer, I know, like, when you're talking about things, I feel like it's your fault, too. Like, whatever yeah. you guys talk about, like, obviously... It's yeah, you're, fault, running, the the you're running the you're running the conversation, you feel yeah. me? So I have to answer, like, yeah. with the questions that are asked me. So I feel what you're saying. Like, yeah, so, yeah. like, I feel like, and me and Streetner, you know, it's nothing, but, like, we stopped, you know, I left the office or whatever. Yeah. So I kind of was like, it was right after that. So in that moment, I was like, damn, like, I kind of felt... Oh, like, we, we teaming up on you. Yeah, I felt yeah, a little, fuck, a little bro, type like, of way about yeah. it. I was like, damn. And, but, I mean, I didn't take it too personal. I was just like, damn, like, we definitely got to chop it up so we can kind of understand each other more. Yeah. Because, like. That's why I said I feel like this was overdue. We just needed to, to clear the air because it really ain't, yeah. it ain't even shit like that. No. I just been, I'm telling you, I done spent so much money on this shit, bro, and I've been working so hard. So, I feel like I just took it more personal, like, like, fuck, what I got to do to get this nigga's eye to be yeah, able to, like, yeah. this nigga's going crazy. You feel me? And, and you did that shit. Yeah, you feel me? So it ended up working out in in the long run, but I feel like that's why everything gonna be seen. Like I knew you was gonna see the fucking interview. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, but that's what I'm saying. Even if you ran it back, I don't feel like I ever said anything madly disrespectful or no, nothing no, crazy no, no, like that. No. I just I feel like I addressed it and kinda got through that shit quick as I could. Yeah. I feel like I talked more about Rawest and what he was doing more than like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. our situation. You feel me? No, yeah, and um it, yeah, I didn't take it too personal or nothing, you feel me? Like, I mean, if you did, it it's, it's, under, really, it's understandable, yeah. though, you feel me? Because, like, my name didn't come up or nothing. It was just, like, um, like you said. But, no, nah, yeah, shout out Rhino. You feel me? I'll fuck with him. I, I appreciate anyone who's trying to blog and put on for the yeah, scene. Yeah, they put... Streamers, whoever it is, bro. Anyone who's putting on for the scene, it helps I agree. us a whole. You feel me? It we does. Like, it brings light. We yeah. were just talking about that shit, too. It brings light to, yeah. to the city, bro, that's been real dim for a long time, so... I appreciate everybody that does this shit, but definitely I feel like as far as numbers and what the fuck going on, I mean, we don't have to, that's not an argument thing. Like, everybody know who's doing what, you feel me? So, no, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. You've been making your fucking moves, <laughs> for sure. I appreciate it, but um, 
My bad. I didn't mean to like turn nah, into that whole shit. Nah, but I be honest, it's cool because it's the same like, thing that happened when I was over there. Like yeah. when you sit in these chairs and you're an artist, you have to learn how to what's right to say and what's not. Like we right. ain't got no, I don't got no PR people or nothing. Right. But I kind of understand what makes sense and what don't. That's why I'm saying right. I'm never gonna overtake it because if it's an actual issue, shit, we have each other's number. Right. We talk to each other on the gram. Like I could have just reached out and, and told you. Yeah, yeah. But a couple of times when we had issues, it wasn't like no behind no back yeah, shit. I yeah, came yeah. directly to you about it. It's just some music yeah, shit. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is, bro. And I'm glad we was able to motherfucking put that shit beside him, you know what I'm saying? Get this shit rolling. So we no, keep doing yeah. this shit, you feel me? Yeah. No, and I never really looked at it as like nothing crazy. It was it was more so just like, hey, all right, you feel me like we gonna have to just link her. Bro, if it was like, if I was in your chair, I would feel some type of way too. Like, damn, <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah, like yeah. it's all on motherfucking. That shit got like three thousand views and shit. Like, damn, bro, talk to me. Like, you yeah. feel me? At the end of the day, so I'm saying like I, under, I really do understand it though. That's why I'm yeah. like, it, we're all humans at the end of the day, bro. Like, yeah. I feel like sometimes being an artist too, you 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 uh, separate that. Like, no, you don't sure. re like I'm just like coming at my high minute, but really, nigga, you're Brenton. You feel me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you still a person at the end of the day, and it's easier to talk to people instead of like. I guess feel some type of way about some shit that could be easily explained and talked about. You know oh yeah, hundred percent. No, yeah. And and my bad. I didn't mean to make it like you know talk about my background and shit. It was just like like we said earlier. And this goes for anyone. You feel me? There's always like you see the okay. I'm posting the promo prices. You see the videos. You see like me doing these big interviews. But motherfuckers, you know. And I'm the same shit as you. Motherfuckers see you on you know about to hit 100k with mo. They see you doing these crazy visuals with TSF and shit, mm -hmm. but they ain't they ain't see you know you two three four years ago what you know the shit you was going yeah through. grinding you, to get to this position still, yeah yeah we all still going through some shit so just, man every day bro nah it's, it's all love and respect at the end of the day you feel me you're definitely like one of the most talented hardworking artists out here right now like, I appreciate that you're probably more consistent than. Probably like ninety five percent. I ain't seen nobody drop no thirty plus yeah. videos in fifteen months ever. Yeah, and and you, honestly, it's probably because of you that I know Busy B. Mm -hmm. um, and they they've been going crazy. I, I I've never met bro, but yeah, he was supposed to be. He's he, he's in Boulder right now at that fucking the CU game and shit. Cause I wanted him to come through and tap in with you too. Yeah. You feel me? But yeah, that nigga's bro, he be going crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to tell. But uh, him. now we got a little production company made. It's Who the Shooter. Busy B, mm -hmm. um, Shaw Films, and my little cousin Vonsky. He shoots oh, like most of the Kayla Ray shit. You feel me? So it's like four all black shooters and shit. So like a lot of my videos going forward, you're going to like the song uh, Still Gone from my last tape with uh, Rachel Bailey. Oh, okay. That shit finna be a movie, bro, because there's like five people shooting that video. So it's like hella different angles. There's like, What's I'm trying to really, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to really kind of expand and do different type of shit instead of just keep doing running gun style. So yeah. we try to make a little production company. And motherfuckers could tap into that too, cause I feel like you'll get better visuals from that for multiple angles, and I feel like it just make you feel more important too when you have like a lot of light. You know what I'm saying? They have all these different equipment and shit. Like, oh, yeah. I feel like that's gonna take off this year too. You feel me? No, that's the real shit. I did see that one with Rachel. I mm -hmm. seen the one you just dropped with Tay too. Yeah, I fucked with that one. That shit it's hard. Block party, right? Yeah, uh, back to back. Back to back. That shit hard. This nigga Tay is crazy, bro. A lot of niggas be sleep on him too, cause yeah. he ain't dropped a lot. But that niggas finna do a lot this year. Oh, yeah, no, and JJ probably. for sure. Well, everybody knows the bigger FPP niggas, but I feel like Psy, JJ, and this nigga Tay don't get as much love as they should. Yeah, yeah. the motherfuckers yeah. is all talented, and they have their own style. I feel like JJ sounds more like a Chicago nigga. Uh, fucking Tay sounds like like a Shoreline Mafia type. No, you know yeah, what I'm saying sound. Sure, yeah. Psy yeah. just got his own sound. You feel me? I feel like him and Monte are kind of similar, but they both you know what I'm saying still have their own. You know what I'm saying? There's differences, but right, right. man, I love making this music with all the niggas over there. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that like some of the first videos they got to doing shit was with me. You feel me? Oh, yeah. Like that shit dope. Nah, that's some real shit. And it was, um, it was smart and a good connection for you to make. You know? What I'm Hell saying? yeah. Hell yeah. Both one of my niggas though. Really yeah. You know, both go good together. Yeah. I feel like me and Mo really, that's what made us really stick. Like we started making some songs and then it started being four or five later and we just started fucking with the music. So mm -hmm. now it's like almost every time I'm going to the studio, I'm bringing bro. You feel me? Oh, yeah. Or somebody from the camp over there. You feel me? Oh, that's some real shit. Okay. Um, what you got on the way? Any projects? Um, any upcoming shows, music videos? What, what do the people got to look forward to? A lot of, a lot of videos coming up. Um, Shit, we just dropped one. Me and JJ just dropped one yesterday or the day before on a video got video got visuals page. Oh, okay, yeah, I seen that one. Yeah, yeah wicked. Um, I got the song with Rachel dropping, still going. I got a song I did on this private plane with Busy uh, Dubai, gonna drop soon. 
I got. You were on a private plane, or that's what it was called. Yeah, it's on a private plane, like a little, like one, like single engine plane. We like flew over like oh, downtown, okay. over to Bronco State, and that shit finna be crazy. Hard. Like, you did a video. Oh, oh that's hard. Yeah, that shit finna be. Trust me, I got some. I've been really trying to think out the something? box. You feel me? Yeah. But uh, I got few but hated dropping on Thanksgiving. I got a chicks tape style tape dropping, just yeah. like all female artists and me on uh, Valentine's. I got Grit for President 2, July 4th again. I got Big Shit 2 dropping on my birthday, April 28th. That's the four right now, for sure. I got a tape dropping with uh, DZ, but no date for that yet. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's a lot of shit coming on. And a lot of shit's already like done. We just oh, yeah. going from, really I just need to fuck start dropping these fucking tape covers because yeah, yeah. all the ones I just named are done. You feel me? So, yeah, so you've been working for it. Bro, I, I can show you on my phone for you, Leo. I probably got like 500 songs in the last like 18 months. That's like shit crazy. Dude. So no, I respect the work ethic. You sounding like future right now. And I stay in here because that's <laughs> yeah. how I feel like I developed. Because I, like I said, I wasn't... Some people, I feel like they just hop right off the porch with this rap shit. And it just makes sense for them. And they're just automatically good. I was sorry. So yeah. I feel like that's what motivated me to be where I'm at now too. Because motherfuckers was telling me like, bro, you suck. Like you shouldn't even do music. And I was yeah. just like, fuck. Eventually, I'm going to... Make one of these songs, and motherfucker, I'm like, damn, like, that shit's all right, bro. And yeah, then it started yeah. being like that. So, like, niggas was like, damn, this nigga kind of going crazy. You feel me? Like, so I just love working because the more you stay in the studio, you can work on your sound. Like, yeah. shit, been draining the fuck out of my pockets and shit, but it got me where I'm trying to get to. So I'm not even too mad about it. How do you stay positive and keep a motivated mindset when it, because, I mean, I'm sure you experience this as, you know, an entrepreneur, you know, an artist, like, there's a lot of good days where you're feeling hella proud of yourself, good about your music and all that, but then there's a lot of down days where you're like, damn, like, is this it, blah, blah, blah. So how do you kind of stay positive and stay motivated to keep pushing, keep going um, I think, in life and stuff? With I think I'm staying positive and motivated because, like I said, the shit I've been working at and doing has been working. You feel me? I feel like if I was just taking L after L after L, I'd been like, fuck this music shit because right. I'm expending too much money in it for the shit not to work. But um, also just... The internal growth I can see, like I remember what I was making versus now. Like right. I know, like certain song, like the song I sent you that day for the review. Like yeah. I know who's gonna fuck with it to a degree. You feel me? Yeah. It's not gonna be like oh, it's a questionable type of thing. So I feel like the more I keep working and the recognition from other type of things, like I said, I'm sitting there doing an interview, shit like that. That keeps you positive. But to be honest, I don't really have a negative mind state about anything, to, like overall, because I've been through so much shit now. Like this is some shit I love. You feel me? So if I didn't want to do it, I don't have to. So. That's real shit. I can respect that, man. That, that's dope to see you like actually love the music. Have the yeah, I love it, bro. So I'm like, everybody want to use this shit as a jug. I'm already getting bread. You feel right. me? Like, I don't have to do music if I didn't want to, but I love this shit. So like, that's mm -hmm. why I spend so much money in it and time and effort and hella videos, hella vlogs. Like, that's another thing this year. I'm trying to figure out how to start scheduling these these vlogs. Drops in between the fucking videos and shit. Cause yeah. I probably got like 36, 37 hours worth of film just vlogging shit, trying to like figure out how to splice it up and make it make sense in between certain different projects yeah. and shit. Cause I'm shooting all the time, so. No, that makes sense. Shit, I mean, we can always talk about it. You for me? Yeah, we probably should. I need some help with that shit, cause it's just it's been overwhelming. Trying to keep everything. Like I have so much shit stocked. It's like I don't want to let songs fall through the cracks. You feel me? So I've been trying to drop as consistent as I can, but then I have a whole. A lot of people in my ear too, like, bro, like, don't overly, you know what I'm saying? Don't oversaturate what the fuck you putting out. Yeah. Like, make them fucking wait for shit. So, right. like, that's all I've really been. Like I said, I got five tapes just yeah. waiting for the date to get here. You feel me? Like, I'm not, like, making new songs for those. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of the shit I do is, like, the songs y'all are hearing are songs I made last year. Right. Like, the ones I'm making now, like, they ain't going to be out till next year type shit. Here and there, I'll drop a few in there just so I could, you know what I'm saying? If it makes sense. But other than that, I'd be... I'm just using the shit I have. I feel like I got to a point where the music started becoming consistent. Yeah. So I can put out old music. Yeah. So like it yeah. doesn't sound like, oh damn, like if I put this song out, it's going to sound hella different than yeah, yeah. where I'm at. Like some of them songs I had to just, you know what I'm saying, just let them go. But now that it's been consistent, I ain't really been in no rush. You feel me? No, yeah. That makes sense. I feel like you, you kind of got to do that. All right, cool. Um, it's almost been an hour anyway. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> but no, I feel like you kind of got to do that. Um, but hey man, is there any like final thoughts, any shout outs, any last minute things you want to speak on? Shit, man, I just want to shout out all my niggas, bro. Shout out my nigga Ralphie Sway, Busy B. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always throw this up. 
Just so I can clear that up too. This ain't no like my brother's from 60s, but this ain't no 60s shit. This some V shit. You know what I'm saying? V for vibration. You feel me? Everybody from DOT and my camp. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, shit. Ross, you, street nerds, everybody that's motherfucking making this shit go from a dark ass city. You know what I'm saying? Putting some light on this shit. Appreciate that, bro. Everybody, every artist really out here doing their thing. Like I'm telling, you, there's so many. I don't even want to name no rappers because everybody that's really doing shit, we all know who the fuck's who. Yeah. You feel me? But there's so many talented niggas out here, man. And, Seeing them motivates the fuck out of me too, cause when I hear a nigga make this song, I'm like, damn, like now I gotta go harder now, cause oh, nigga yeah. didn't up to any on nigga, you feel me? Like, no. so I really just shout out to the scene, period. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to all the motherfuckers that support me and shit. Overall, shout out to FPP. No, that's real, man. I appreciate it. Um, make sure uh, where can the people find you on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all that. Big underscore grit on all. Yeah. Big underscore grit. Okay, YouTube, big grit, all that, man. Go check them out. Links will be in the description. What's the first song they should check out this interview? Shit. One song. What you want with that nigga sauce for winning? That shit's a smack. Okay. Like that shit hard to sell. That's probably like my. I think that's my biggest song outside of the song I did with Mo. I think that's like a thirty k. Hell yeah. So. Yeah. All right, man. Well, shit. This been a legendary interview. Man, appreciate, appreciate you, my boy, you, for real. Man. Appreciate hey. the opportunity. Hell yeah. You know what appreciate saying? you. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Comment down below who you want to see next on the Mall High Minute. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button to stay notified when all the latest news drop. Make sure y'all go follow Big Grit. All links be in the description. Shout out the sponsor today's video. Hey, you sound bring it all water. too. Hydration for the go-getters, man. Tap in with them for sure. Yes, yeah, sir, man. Hey, this has been Legendary Mile High Minute, number one podcast in the universe. We out. Yes, sir.